Well, good morning and welcome back to the channel. I wanted to take a little time this morning to bring you guys some content that's a little different from what you've seen from my channel so far, but I think it's, uh, I think it's an important uh, video to make. Um, I've been given a lot of thought for the last year about um, emergency car uh, kit and um, scenarios that I could find myself in when I'm out on these adventures or uh, if the family's on a vacation or something like that. So this video that I'm going to bring to you guys this morning is sort of the scenario where I am out on an adventure on a forest road. There's been an accident, the car um, has hit a ravine or something like that, and I need to get myself out of the situation. Um, this isn't a car kit, emergency car kit video. I might do one of those at one point where the point is to stay in the car and wait for help and uh, have, have, uh, have things in the car that can, pro can provide uh, survival things uh, to get us to that point. But like I said, this video is about the, uh, the pack and the kit to get out. So I hope you guys follow along and join me and uh, let's look and see what's in the pack. Okay, before we move on to the contents of the pack, let's talk for a few minutes about what happened on I-95 earlier in the week in Virginia. So we had a snowstorm and um, uh, there was a, uh, I think a six, tractor trailer pile up which backed traffic up for about 20 hours so that situation really inspired me to go ahead and make this video even though I've been kind of researching and uh, wanting to make this video for a while so my thoughts on that situation was if 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 my if myself and my family were were trapped on that interstate for 20 22 hours I don't want to be the guy who's relying on the car beside me, the car behind me, or in front of us to, uh, to take care of us. I want to be able to provide that uh, comfort and warmth for my family, the survivability for my family. All right, let's take a minute to talk about the pack itself. I ended up going with the uh, 511 Rush Air 24 liter. Um, I was able to pick this pack up locally, which is always a good thing. I try to support local. Some of the contents I was able to buy local, some I had to buy online. But anyway, I, uh, I went with this, uh, this drab green just because I didn't want to get a camo or a black or even a desert tan. I wanted to kind of stay away from the tactical look as much as possible, even though it's, uh, it's got the molly webbing and it, it does show signs of being a tactical day pack. Um, a few pros and cons before we get started on the pack. I've had several opportunities to do some day hikes on it and so I've kind of I've gotten a feel for how it carries and things like that. I will say um, I do like the fact that it has a ton of pockets and a ton of different storage areas. Um, I like the size a lot. I'm able to fit all my contents in here with uh, even having a little bit of room to spare in case I needed to throw a heavy jacket or something in here. All right, so the cons of this pack, I will say that I don't like the fact that it doesn't have a waist strap. Every day pack or backpack I've ever had has had a waist strap, and I'm sure there's some kind of tech, uh, tactical reasoning behind that, maybe uh, easy accessibility in a hurry, um, I'm guessing is the number one reason. But I will say that that has been a little bit of a disadvantage. Um, one other thing, I'm not 100% uh, on board with the design of the upper straps and how they rest on my shoulders. They tend to want to spread out. But anyway, I, overall I like the pack. So let's move on to the contents. Alright guys, before we move on to individual contents, this is what the pack looks like uh, when it's opened up. It's got kind of a clamshell opening. Um, you can see there's uh, several different uh, different compartments there um, and this is the body of it so uh, plenty of plenty of space in there for different gear and then on this side here we have an upper zipper we have another zipper here so uh, just a quick view of that okay let's talk for a second about where I came up with the ideas for the contents of this kit so there are two or three different expert survivalists I've been following uh, for the past year or so on YouTube or Instagram or whatever. And um, 
Dave Canterbury's TNCs of survivability is kind of what I focus this pack around. And then there's another guy, um, the gray bearded green beret on YouTube. Um, he has a lot of uh, ideas outside of what I've gathered from Canterbury's Pathfinder School. So anyway, um, we'll just start with the 10 C's, a little bit of kind of what I keep in my pack. And um, first on the list is uh, cutting tools. So if there's a situation where, like I mentioned before, where I'm, uh, I'm on an adventure on a forest road, I'm 10 miles out, uh, it's icy, or for some odd reason, uh, my car has slid off into a ravine, the number one tool I want is a knife. I mean, that's just a given or whatever. So what, uh, what these guys uh, suggest is a full tang knife. So what I'm gonna carry in my kit as far as a full tang knife is the, uh, is the SE5. And so this is a heavy duty knife, uh, 1095 carbon steel with a quarter inch spine. Um, the reason why I take such a big knife and not a smaller, four inch bushcraft knife is um, I can use it to baton wood. So if I need to make myself a fire, um, I'm gonna be able to split small pieces of wood and get kindling ready for that. And uh, so yeah, the SE5 um, would be the knife of choice for my pack. Um, also, um, uh, a small saw. So I just purchased this, uh, this silky uh, pocket boy saw recently and um, it's perfect, it's small, it cuts like through butter. It's it's pretty amazing little saw. So this is the kind of saw that I'd wanna keep. Um, so that way I can procure and, uh, wood and get a little fire started if I needed. Also, um, they always say to have uh, maybe a multi-tool, whether that be a Swiss Army knife or a Leatherman. Um, I choose to carry the Leatherman Wingman. I think I've mentioned this in, a, in another video, but, um, you know, pliers and uh, and just all kinds of different uh, tools on here to use in that kind of situation where you maybe need to build some shelter. And uh, so this is a great option here. So first C of the 10 C's would be those cutting tools. Uh, another C in the 10 C's of survivability is in my pack, there's got to be a way to make a fire. So and it's important that um, if you're going to be overnight, even in summertime, uh, if you can to, to make a fire. Uh, one, to keep warm, obviously, but uh, fire can be a morale booster. So um, with that said, I'm just going to show you quickly a few things that I keep in here. Number one is just a Bic lighter. I mean, always have a Bic lighter on you. Uh, you know, this is this is the first thing you want to use before you expend energy on, you know, a ferro rod or bow drill or anything like that. I mean, you're getting into deep survivability then. But if this gets wet, we got to have some backups. So, uh, waterproof matches are always a good option as a backup. Uh, simple, um, and also carry a. Uh, ferrocerium rod so uh, you know you can get sparks from that and the good thing about these is uh, no matter what the weather whether it be raining or snowing you're gonna get a spark off this um, I also heard about a trick not too long ago and I've actually been taking it on uh, adventures and actually practicing with it is a uh, dryer sheet uh, dryer lint so uh, we can <laughs> keep a little bit of this in my pack it weighs nothing so uh, when you strike this with a ferrocerium rod, it takes a strike. And uh, so combustion devices, absolutely essential in your kit. Okay. Let's take just a minute to talk about cover and shelter. So in this part of the pack, um, the main thing to think about is, is when you leave the house, dress for the weather. Dress for an accident or some sort of scenario where you are gonna be spending the night not in your own home. So in the winter time, even if you leave the house and you're warm, take your hat, your gloves, a heavy coat, that sort of thing. Uh, talking about that situation on I-95, how many people may have just warmed up their car in the driveway, maybe put on a coat, but did not realize that within an hour or so, they're gonna be sitting in cold for 20 hours. 
All right, so with that said, let's just touch on shelter a little bit. So I always like to keep a tarp in my, uh, in my kit. Um, the gray bearded green beret mentioned that you always wanna have something to sleep on, something to sleep in, and something to sleep under. So I've kind of taken that uh, advice there. So the tarp shelter, uh, a must. Um, keep a small wool blanket. This pack's down pretty, uh, pretty small in my pack there. I keep one of these Mylar uh, survival blankets. Uh, hopefully I'll never have to use one of these, but it's in my kit in case I do. And then just a cheap uh, emergency poncho. Um, that should get you, uh, you know, where you need to be until help arrives or you can keep moving on until you can find help for yourself. So shelter, cover, important. Okay guys, um, we've gone through a couple of the items in the uh, kit and uh, we've gotten to a point now where we can kind of move things right along. Um, I've got things lined up right here that uh, we'll discuss, but we'll discuss it briefly because it just doesn't need a lot of explanation. So um, obviously in your kit, you're gonna wanna be able to boil water. Um, water, obviously everyone knows, essential to life. So I just take a small uh, stainless steel um, pot and uh, keep that for that. And then you can cook food in it if you need, need to, but to boil water, essential. Um, going back to building shelter if needed, um, you're gonna need some sort of cordage or uh, bank line or paracord or something to do that with. So I try to carry a 550 paracord. Um, I actually have a little bit of a small climbing rope that uh, if I needed to do a heavier duty job, I, I've got this for that. So, candling, how are we going to uh, light our way at night? So, obviously, you want at least two uh, forms of uh, light. I uh, carry a small uh, flashlight with about 550 lumens. Let me keep that going, and, um, but also I prefer a headlamp. Um, I found that over the years around camp or in any kind of hiking situation, a, uh, a headlamp's good. So I like the Petzl headlamps. I've carried these for years. The good thing about this and the flashlight that I carry is they both have a uh, strobe light on it, which is gonna be good for signaling. So uh, keep that in mind if you're purchasing a flashlight or a headlamp, um, because the point is, is you wanna be found. Um, you want to get out of that situation. So having some sort of way to signal is going to be paramount. Let's see, so you're going to want some sort of cotton material. And so I like to carry these uh, cotton bandanas. And so the purpose of these would be, well, there's a number of reasons. Um, I carry a red one also for signaling. I mentioned that in a previous video, but um, any cotton bandana, uh, you can use these to, uh, to strain water into your pot to get you know, the bulky stuff out of there. Um, so, but there are so many uses, uh, you know, you wrap a cut, you can use it as a tourniquet. Um, so a couple of bandanas in your kit is a good thing. Uh, you're gonna want some sort of, uh, some sort of cargo tape. So uh, I prefer to carry the Gorilla uh, brand just because of uh, how it, the adhesiveness on it is just, uh, is, uh, is just, above and beyond anything else I've used before. So, but duct tape or any type of heavy duty adhesive uh, could help out with, um, with clothing repair or shelter building or just a number of things. You can even use this stuff to start a fire if needed. I carry a small compass. Um, the thing about carrying a compass though, is you kind of know, you need to know how to use it. And that's kind of like this whole kit. Um, all this gear is not going to do you any good if you don't practice um, how to use this stuff. So with a compass, uh, you know, and cartology all together, I mean, you need to understand how they work. So, but I keep one in my kit, so uh, just in case, right? All right, so the only thing that I've left out of this kit on Dave Canterbury's 10 C's is a canvas needle. I plan to pick one up at some other time, a sail needle. Um, 
to repair clothing or repair my pack or something like that. But this is the type of pack I hope that will get me out uh, of danger within a day or two. Okay guys, we're gonna sort of finish up this video with a few things that I've decided to add to the pack. Um, not necessarily in a dire situation would you need this stuff, but I feel that it's pretty important. So I feel that a first aid kit is pretty important. So uh, I was kind of surprised when researching some of these guys that these weren't in their uh, essential kit, but uh, a small first aid kit with some bandages, some wraps and stuff like that, definitely to me uh, is pretty important uh, piece of gear. A little bit of food, so uh, just a few, maybe a few bars, uh, some dehydrated food, um, just to get you through a day or a night. Obviously we can survive uh, many days without food. We got to have that water, but uh, these really don't weigh anything. So having them in my kit and they don't really expire for years. So I think that's something that uh, obviously another morale booster too, to be able to have something to eat hot um, would get you a little farther. I, know I covered boiling water, but sometimes on the move, you might not have the opportunity to stop, build a fire, and boil water. So uh, I like to carry this little life straw. It's just a small filtration device. You can actually drink right out of a water source. Um, I might would filter that water with my bandana before I drink out of it. But um, I think it's pretty essential to have this, especially if you're on the move. Um, I spoke on this on a previous video. Now these things are a little uh, weighty, um, a little heavy, but um, if you can get cell service, a lot of these places that I go, uh, and the reason why I like to have this kit is because I don't have cell service. And so to be able to recharge your phone uh, in the field, uh, it's gonna be pretty important to, when you get to a point where you actually can pick up some cell service, you'll have a full charge on your phone. So uh, I keep this in my pack. Not everybody probably does. And I think lastly, basically, is um, I keep a few maps. I keep a few maps of the areas that I'm going to be in when I'm camping and backpacking. Or if I'm traveling throughout the country somewhere, I'll pick up maps in those areas. And also keep this small wilderness survival book in here. Uh, I, keep, I try to keep abreast of different skills, uh, shelter building and stuff like that. But sometimes in a situation where you're fatigued, you're super tired, um, you're not thinking straight, you can kind of revert to this little book and will help you out with some small tasks. With that said, I hope that the video uh, helps you guys or at least it brings attention to maybe you should have a few things in your car uh, on a camping adventure or even, even traveling um, to be prepared for, to take care of you and your family if the situation arises. So. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and you took something from it, I urge you to subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.